Okay. Okay. Let's uh, uh, have some revision on what we have studied last week. As I mentioned, the chapter, uh, what we call the first year, the chemistry is not very difficult. If you just do more exercise, you will be able to understand it. So where we stopped last week, okay? Let Let's uh, go back a little bit. Eh? We have mentioned there are two major types of uh, reaction in uh, alcohol but normally we will convert the alcohol to the alkyl halide because the hydroxyl group is not a good living group. Okay, so what we have covered so far is the dehydration. Where is it? We just go back a little bit, eh? reverse. So this is what we study so far. Dehydration of alcohol using strong acid. The strong acid could be H2SO4. Okay, so you convert. In this case, you have the alcohol group, the OH group attached to the C, which is the alpha carbon. And you have a bitter carbon here, means you have a bitter H here. This is the bitter elimination reaction that you have studied last chapter. Okay, similar kind of reaction. The only thing is now you use acid catalyzed. The acid that we use could be H2SO4, okay, or this uh, p toluene sulfonic acid. I will just go through very quickly we had, because we have already studied. Okay, we, I can also see the increasing of the rate of de de dehydration increase from primary secondary to tertiary alcohol. Why do you think so? Because, because what? The first step involves protonation, isn't it? Eh? So the tertiary alcohol can form the most stable carbocation. Okay, the primary alcohol may not, uh, uh, what we call, undergo, uh, did not form carbocation. So you have the E1 and E2 mechanism. It depends on what alcohol that you are using. So if you are using tertiary alcohol, it will be E1 or E2. E1 or E2 mechanism, if you are using tertiary alcohol. E1. Eh? E1 because it only involves unimolecular eh, in the rate determining step. Okay, so I'm not going to repeat that. So, for example, this is the same. If the alcohol have two or three different bitter carbon, then it will tend to form the product I mean the alkene product with more substituent. Okay, this following the Zexel groove rules. Okay, so the mechanism, the mechanism I have mentioned, you have to uh, go back and practice. The first step is always from the attacking of the electron to a, a positive charge of proton in this case. Okay, forming the water molecule, which is a better living group compared to the OH group. Okay, once you have formed this, what is this? This is a primary alcohol or secondary alcohol? This is a primary alcohol. So it go undergo E2 reaction. Okay, so once you have formed a better living group, the base eh, that you got from the H2SO4 attack the bitter hydrogen and you get a, a double bond. This is a standard mechanism that you have learned last last chapter also okay there's no this is what uh, blackboard no whiteboard uh. I do not know how to write I don't have a chalk here huh? no problem you can just look at the screen uh, there. where is the white chalk okay later we will find out let's continue this is just a revision eh, to what you have learned. Okay, this is not nothing new. Eh? So now we go to secondary and tertiary alcohol. As we said, it undergo E1 reaction eh, form by the formation of the carbocation. Okay. Hey, everything doesn't work. This one also doesn't work. Okay. Uh, this is the this is you can also use. Let's go back, eh? Okay, 
The next slide, is, you can also use phosphorus oxide chloride okay, as an acid instead of H2SO4. In this case, you use, need to use pyridine or your reaction is carried in the pyridine as a solvent. Okay, so you use POCl3 and the mechanism, as you can see, is also from OH attacking the phosphorus in this case. In this case, flip call right, left, then we form this species. Pyridine is a base, remove the H, then you got this as a bit better living group. Okay, a good living group. Then because this is a bitter elimination reaction, you attack the bitter hydro hydrogen by the pyridine. Pyridine in this case acts as a base. Then you get a double bond and this left as a leaving group. So you got this reaction as well. Okay, this is using phosphoric oxal chloride. So you <coughs> uh, last week we stopped here, I believe. Huh? Now we go to a different reaction. That means you have to convert the alcohol to alkyl halide. Okay, convert the alcohol to alkyl halide. How to carry out the reaction? You are using hydrohalic acid. Hydrohalic acid included HCl, HBr, and HI. Okay, so as you can see, if you just react uh, this, it doesn't replace because OH is this is a nucleophile. OH is not a good leaving group, so the reaction does not occur. So you have to react the alcohol with the hydrohalic acid to change it to alkyl halide then the reaction occur. Once you have changed it to alkyl halide then it's the same with what you have learned eh? the reaction of alkyl halide it could be substitution or could be elimination okay so in this session we will focus on how to convert the OH group to the alkyl halide group okay to alkyl halide so the reaction of the alcohol with HX is general method to prepare primary, secondary, and tertiary alkyl halide. Of course, you use different reagents. Okay? For example, in this case, you react the alcohol with HBr, you get a, a bromide, alkyl bromide, and you get a H2O as a side product. Okay? And in this case, you react with HCl, you replace the OH group, you get the chloride here, and you get the water as a side product. Okay, so last week uh, we discussed this. We have some argument, uncertainty. Okay, the reactivity of hydrogen halide increase with increasing acidity. Okay, that means which one is more acidic? I ask you to check. Have you checked? HI is more acidic. Why HI is more acidic? Because the I, the iodide, is a better leaving group and is a weakest base. Okay, when you have a very weak base, conjugate base, your acid will be stronger. Okay, so HI is a what we call a most reactive acid compared to HBr and HI. Okay, that's why the reaction always happens with HBr, but with HI, as we have studied, you need to use zinc chloride as a catalyst. Okay, so we will cover this. Okay. Oh, I forgot to copy it. Eh? Actually, I have. Uh, Okay, never mind. So now, uh, this is a SN2 mechanism. Okay, reaction with primary alcohol with HX and XN2 mechanism. Why does it call as SN2 mechanism? Because it's a nucleophilic substitution reaction that involves two molecules. Okay, where are the two molecules? The first step, you have to convert the OH, okay, react with the HBr. Then the OH attack the H, forming a water. This is always a standard step. Okay. Then this is a better living group. The bromide uh, produced act as a nucleophile. Okay. So this nucleophile attack the carbon here, which is slightly uh, uh, positive. Okay. Then OH left a living group. You get the the product alkyl bromide. Okay. As an SN2 substitution because it involves two species that's why we call it SN2 substitution eh? this is not something new that you have just learned okay so how about this just now that one is a primary uh, alcohol how about tertiary alcohol the tertiary alcohol will follow the SN1 mechanism 
It's still a substitution reaction, but it is involved only unimolecular. Why does it unimolecular? Because this is a tertiary alcohol. You see the reaction, first step are the same. OH attack the hydrogen, forming a, a good leaving group. But now, instead of bromide attack the C, the OH2, uh, this water, left first to form a, a carbocation. Okay, to form a carbocation. Once the carbocation has formed, and, and this forming of carbocation is a red determining step. Okay, that's why we call it unimolecular reaction. Okay, once the carbocation is formed, the bromide as a nucleophile attack the C. Okay, then you get a, a this uh, product. Okay, this is the only difference between the SN1 and SN2 mechanism. Okay, SN2 involves two uh, uh, species in the red determining step. SN1 involves only one. Normally, it's a carbocation, eh? the forming of carbocation. So you have to carbocation have to form first. Then the nuclear flower attack the the carbon. Okay, this you have learned eh? even in the chapter seven, isn't it? Eh? Doctor Hasna has covered it. So this is nothing new. So how about this? Chloride is a poorer nucleophile than bromide or iodide. That means bromide when go and go through the uh, what we call the column, uh, the group. Okay, the nucleosy, uh, new, the what we call nucleosy, nucleophilicity. Okay, nucleophilicity increase or decrease? Increase. Eh? When go through the group, the nucleophilicity increase. So that means bromide. Is a stronger nucleophile than chloride. Okay, why? Why? Because the chloride is more what electronegative and also the smaller size. Okay. So in this case, because chloride is a poorer nucleophile, so it, it it's it, the reaction will be faster if you use with the uh, zinc chloride. Okay. Reaction of primary alcohol with HCl occur in the presence of Lucas reagent, eh? zinc chloride is a Lucas reagent. You, uh, you do the test in the KUT two hundred six lab. Hey, no, eh? you are first year. Eh? <laughs> when you are when you are going to second year, you will do this. Uh, what we call qualitative qualitative analysis in the KUT two hundred six lab, and in a, le a level also actually you carry out this test. Eh? Lucas reagent forming what forming if I'm not mistaken a white precipitate. Okay. So this is the test for a primary alcohol. Okay? So, so the first step, you have an alcohol. Now you attack the zinc. Eh? Zinc is a positive, uh, what we call atom. Okay, slightly positive. Okay? So after you attack this, please don't talk. Eh? If you want to talk, I will ask you, come in front here and talk. Okay? The alcohol will attack the zinc. Then we're forming this complexion or species. Okay, this zinc chloride OH eh, is a uh, it's a good living group. So chloride now because it's a weaker nucleophile, and you need a better living group. Okay, you, water what, compared to water, this is even a better living group. So you need to convert eh, your so-called your alcohol to this intermediate species eh, with a better living group, zinc chloride oxide. Okay. So the same mechanism happen. Chloride attack the carbon, and you get a, a living group, and you got your compound, your desired compound, which is the alkyl chloride. Okay. Clear so far. Okay. Now we go to the next slide. Uh, this is something addition, and but it's not new. Okay. Knowing that the mechanism allows us to predict the stereochemistry of the product when the reaction occurs at the stereogenic center. This is a stereogenic center. Okay, four different groups attached to this C. Okay, this is a stereogenic center. But now you want to convert HBr, uh, no, you want to react with HBr, then this is a product. As you can see, where is the white chart? Eh? Here. Cannot, cannot draw anything. Okay, if you cannot find them, you have to imagine. Okay? <laughs> huh? As you can see, the OH 
See, eh? the OH here have a lone pair. He attacked the H in the HBr, isn't it? Forming a, a water molecule with a positive charge. Okay, so you imagine in your mind there is a water molecule in a positive charge. Okay, then it's at this portion. Eh? This becomes OH, H positive. Okay, then you produce a bromide as a nucleophile. Okay, the bromide must attack from the opposite direction. That means the bromide have to attack from here. Okay, it cannot attack from here because this is a, a steric hindrance. Okay, so if the bromide attack from here, that's why you get the product here. But this product is a product of inversion. That means previously you have R, then you get S or the other way. Okay, because it attacked from the opposite side. This is also nothing new. Eh? You have studied in the theory chemistry. So, how about tertiary alcohol? Tertiary alcohol, the first step is also protonation, forming a, a living group water molecule. But the only difference is, the only difference is, if we go back here, uh, this is, okay. Now you can see from here, uh, the first step, this is for, okay, let, uh, because we don't have a uh, uh, white chalk, then you can imagine from here, the first group, uh, uh, actually this doesn't reflect, uh, but this is not a stereogenic center, so you cannot see from here. But here you can see, this is also not stereogenic center, but you have four different groups attached to it, so you can imagine. For the tertiary alcohol, for the tertiary alcohol, you form the water molecule, a uh, uh, living group, then you have a carbocation. In this case, your nucleophile can attack the carbocation from two different directions, isn't it? In front or at the back. Okay, that's why your product, you get a, a racemic mixture. Okay, you get a racemic mixture for, uh, for tertiary alcohol. Okay, primary alcohol, you remember clearly, you get a product of inversion. Okay, because the living group is formed in the opposite side where the nucleophile attack. Okay. Okay, now we go to this uh, 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 conversion of alcohol to alkyl halide. Okay, to alkyl halide. In this case, you are using thionyl chloride, SO2, C, uh, SO, Cl2, and phosphorus bromide. Okay, Phosphor phosphorus tribromide. Okay, you convert the alcohol into a bromide. This reaction, or both reagents, convert the OH group into a living group in situ. In situ means in the reaction mixture. Okay? Mean directly in the reaction mixture and provide the nucleophile. Okay? That means the nucleophile also produced there and nucleophile attack and you get the product also in the same reaction mixture. This is what we call in situ. Either chloride and bromide to replace the living group. Actually, I want you to try to draw out the mechanism, but I couldn't find a white chalk. Okay? Never mind. I will find it when I give you time to draw the mechanism. You know, you know uh, what is the uh, structures of thionyl chloride? Thionyl chloride, SO2, Cl, SO, double bond, Cl2. Is it? Not there. Any whiteboard here? No. Just now how the lecturer... Okay. Can I find eh? Where normally Dr. Hasna got the white chalk form? <coughs> huh? Can I find? Can I find them? No need. Huh? Okay, never mind. Just look at here. Okay. Okay, 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 please. So now let's see. Okay, the reaction of al alcohol with thionyl chloride in the presence of pyridine. This mechanism is very similar to the phosphorus chloride. But the, for the phosphorus chloride, it's a strong acid. You will get a, a bitter elimination product. But this one, you will get a substitution product. That means you will react alcohol with thionyl chloride, you will get an alkyl chloride. Okay, how does the reaction occur? Actually, I want you to try. You better try now. Okay, try to draw out the mechanism eh, of ROH react with thionyl chloride. I believe you know how to draw out the structure of thionyl chloride. S double bond O with 2Cl. Okay, trigonal planar. Okay, please 
take five minutes. Later, I will ask randomly, ask you to show your answer. Let's show you the answer. See, any one of you got this? This answer is very straightforward. Okay? See, I, I'm sorry because I, can, I don't have the white chart to show you here, but here is enough. Okay? Let's pay attention. Alcohol is here. You have a lone pair of electron on the oxygen atom. Okay? You always draw your curry arrow from a lone pair or a negative charge. Okay? Your curry arrow is from the lone pair attack the sulfur atom here. Okay? And Cl is a better living group. So one of the Cl left. Okay? Then you got a, a species here. Like an intermediate species. Okay? C double, S double one all still the same. Cl, please pay attention. I give you time to copy later. Even though you have the note, but I want you to move your hand and copy out. Huh? If not, you cannot see. Okay? Once this, I mean the O attack to the S, the Cl left as a leading group, you still have a H attached to O, you see? So your O now become three bond. You have three bond. You see? One from RO, one is a new bond formed between O and S, one is a OH bond. Okay? Your O have a positive charge. Okay? Have a positive charge. And now you have pyridine. This is a structure of pyridine. You must be able to memorize the structures. Okay? And also this the structure for SOCl3. This is trigonal planar. Many of you draw the mechanism with SOCl2. How can you go and work out the mechanism with this? You have to draw the structures. Okay? After that, the pyridine remove the H. Then we form this. Okay? O S double one O C L as a good living group. How many of you managed to get this? Please raise your hand. How many of you able to get to this step? Please raise your hand. Nobody. Nobody able to get under this step. Uh, then all of you are going to fail in the exam. Okay? It's true, isn't it? This is a, such a simple step as I show you. As I said, it's very similar to POCL3 mechanism. Let's go back to the phosphorus correct mechanism. Ah, see? Is it the same? See, eh? OH attack the phosphorus. One of the CL leave eh? as a living group. The next step, pyridine attack the H, forming this. Is it the same? Yes. With SOCL2? But when you look at this one, it sounds very simple, isn't it? Uh, when I ask you to do them, you are not able to do. I just want to warm you. Okay? Organic chemistry is just not like coming here and looking, you know, paying uh, just listen to lecture, then you go back. You will not be able to draw out the mechanism. Eh? You need to move your hand, go back and try it out. Okay? Close your eyes, close your answer. Or don't look at the, uh, the, the textbook. Try to work out your mechanism. Then compare with the textbook answer. Okay? If not, you have, first you have to get the concept correct. Okay? The principle correct. The, double, the arrow, the curry arrow have to always come from a lone pair or a negative charge. Okay? So, you better pray hard eh? and not, eh? go back and try out. Okay? So now I give you a second chance. Uh, better do Okay, maybe we don't have time already. Okay? Okay? Okay, wait eh? Once we have got this as a leading group, so the next step, what is the difference between the phosphor, uh, phosphorus oxal chloride reaction and this one? That is a beta elimination reaction. Isn't it? This one using SOCl2 is a substitution reaction. The product, the desired product is different. So for substitution reaction, you must attack the, the R or the C here, the alkyl group. Okay? So the chloride as a, a weak nucleophile attack the R, then you left, you get SO2, eh? Cl come out, okay? And you get SO2 as a side product and you get RCl. Okay? So this is a substitution reaction. I would say this question is going to you know, we are going to test you, either in the test or in your final exam.
Okay, because this is such a simple and straightforward question. Okay, understand now? Understand the principle? Uh, understand the principle? Maybe I maybe I went too fast previously. I thought every one of you are smart student, but now I know your your level or your standard. Okay, so next time we will have more exercise in the class. More exercise means we will send, spend more time to draw out the mechanism. Okay, if not, you just by looking at it, it looks very simple. Okay, anything you like to ask? Which step that you are unclear? Any step you are not clear? So next time, uh, next week, I will give you a homework before the class. I will ask you to draw out the mechanism. Okay, you better go back and practice. Okay, next next class, which is on uh, Wednesday, we have whiteboard, isn't it? Yeah. Then no escape. I will randomly ask your name and go and show your answer. Okay, please pay attention. Eh? Shh. Not only this particular mechanism, but the mechanism you have studied so far in the in this chapter. I narrow down it to this chapter. Not difficult, is it? H2SO4, POCl3. Ah. You better go back. I give it two days and practice all the mechanism because on Wednesday. I will randomly choose not only three person but more than three. Okay, you try out the mechanism for H2SO4. You try out the mechanism for POCl3, and you try out SOCl2. Is it fair? Yeah. Uh, because you have two days to practice. Okay. Okay, please continue. We will continue. Shh. Now we have one more. Uh, this is something also you need to practice. This is again similar. Okay. The reaction with PBr3, okay, PBr3, uh, this is even easier, okay, this mechanism. The mechanism of this reaction also consists of two steps. First one, conversion of OH group into a better living group, okay. In this case, what is in your mind? The lone pair will attack what? Now you have PBr3, which atom it will attack? P. P huh? Luckily, you didn't say Br, okay. So then it will be neutrophilic cleavage by the Br negative. Br is a better nucleophile, okay, by an SN2 reaction. Now you can already imagine how is the mechanism will look like. Okay, the first step OR or the O lone pair attached with the B, a P, then Br left as a living group. Then Br will act as a nucleophile, isn't it? Let's see whether we are correct. Okay. So OH O attack the P. Br leave. In this case, uh, the whole group, uh, although this is a positive charge, but you do not, you do, do not uh, remove the H because it will leave as a whole group. P, H, O, P, B, R2, like an acid. Okay? So in this case, after the first step, O uh, lone pair attack the phosphorus atom, forming this as a good leaving group okay? with a positive charge. Remember, uh, because you don't have pyridine to remove this, okay? The second step is the same. It's a nucleophilic substitution reaction. SN2 mechanism. Br negative attack the R or the C. Then the whole group P, Br2, OH, okay? Or, or OH, P, Br2 live as a leading group. So you get a, a, your product, your desired product, which is a alkyl bromide. Okay, this is the addition way to get alkyl bromide. Initially, what we have learned, HBr. Alcohol react with HBr, you also get alkyl bromide. Or you can use this, alcohol react with PBr3, also get alkyl bromide. Okay, and I believe this is more for the uh, primary alcohol, okay, which is less reactive. Okay, let's see. Uh, this is a summary of what you have learned. Okay. ROH to RCL, alkyl halide, you can use, react with HCL. Okay? For SN1 mechanism for 2 and 3, because they are through the forming of the carbon cation, and SN2 mechanism for methanol and primary alcohol. For this, you could also use zinc chloride. Okay? Zinc chloride as a uh, form of catalyst. Okay? Or the second step, react for thionyl chloride. This is best for first and secondary alcohol. You see? First and secondary alcohol. 
Okay, because tertiary alcohol, you can always use uh, HCl eh, to form uh, the carbocation. ion. And this is an SN2 mechanism. Okay, for ROH, you want to change to alkyl bromide, you can react with HPR. These are useful for all uh, alcohol, primary, secondary, or tertiary. For SN1 reaction, for secondary and tertiary alcohol, SN2 for methanol and primary alcohol, I repeat. Or you can use second method, PBR3. This is best for primary, uh, methanol, primary and secondary alcohol. See? Okay? And this is a SN2 mechanism. And for, how about iodide? You can use HI. This is a, a strong acid, as we discussed. Or uh, this will be a SN1 mechanism for 2 and 3 and SN2 for methanol and primary alcohol. Okay, the reason we do not use other reagent because HI is a, a strong acid. You, know, you can just directly get your alkyl iodide. Okay, so I think we better stop here.